This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. What's up, guys? This is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself. Welcome to my coach reaction to Kuroko No Basket Episode 8. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who also studied animation and illustration in college and is a low key anime fan. Thanks for clarifying that they hire the best talent for the higher quality scenes and they pay per scene, which makes sense. Now, does that mean that they have a quality animator do multiple scenes over several episodes or do they just hire animators to do the special scenes for one episode? Because it does seem like they change so often and unfortunately that creates less continuity, at least with the visual appeal of the anime. Thank you for clarifying the one point difference that I got so confused on but I'm assuming that there's usually some mistranslation in the language. I love learning new languages, so I will take this one as a compliment. And maybe my pronunciation is not awful for the own sound because I watch so much volleyball and one of my favorite players to watch is Lucas Sackkamp from the Brazilian men's volleyball team. And I always hear the Brazilian announcer pronounce his name Lucão. De graça, Maurício Borges, Bruno com Lucão. But Feel free to correct me on that. I'm just imitating what I hear, but I, I want to get better at my Portuguese. So, obrigado. The teddy bear. I just realized the teddy bear is well in karate uniform. But a man who never misses his shots. That's like the ultimate form of trash talking. Writing on the opponent's hand. I forgot to wear my glasses. So I remember I wanted to imitate Doriyama. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Is that another generation up there on the railings watching him? Oh, more food. Yeah, of course, this guy played like 20,000 games in the tournament. Hey, the more, more you play, the more you eat. And we all know that Kuroko does not, is not able to exert the most energy. From what I remember, I, I think their coach is, is still a student. I'm a little confused because she's able to na like just walk freely in the halls and tell the students to do something. <laughs> Dang, DVDs. I wonder if this... I wonder how old this, this anime is because DVDs, that's, that's old. Nowadays, actually, when I send scattering reports to my players, I just upload it on YouTube and send them the link. We'll see if she actually breaks down the play-by-play -play of each team versus just sending them the game video. <laughs> the sneaky. <laughs> What's unique about that, that she forgot that? Maybe they just want to watch even more game footage from other other teams. I'm 
I'm curious. Let's see if they can animate the weird movements of basketball to make it look actually different. Special practices. Let me watch that again. I'm trying to see if I can observe what the weird movement is. Now, when I watch Haikyuu, the animators did an excellent job animating the unique styles of each team. Like even the angles of the body, the unconventional form. And maybe it's because I don't know basketball as well, but I don't see too much of a difference. Like other than just waving the arms, kind of reminds me of car dealerships when they have those blow up dolls where like the, it has this long hair and they're just waving in the wind. But I'm sure we'll find out exactly what it is. I just hope they can actually animate it. Ooh, stopped Kisei. What does that look like? Overtime! Oh, this is a flashback. Ah, oh, poor guy. This guy's getting criticized from every angle. Hmm, probably because his, his defense is so good. <laughs> so why is he saying he gets excited when other people get upset? That's a sign of a true defender. And that's how you know you are obsessed with basketball defense when you can frustrate people. It's not necessarily always stealing the ball or making someone miss their shot, but it's getting into their head that this annoying person is just constantly on you. I'm surprised they didn't make him bald with different colored hair like Dennis Rodman, like bread hair. I'm curious how the Japanese men's basketball teams, because I know basketball is really popular in Japan as well. Alright, if the green hair guy looks a little concerned, then that means this team must be pretty good. Hey, why do they have two people with that surprise look? Maybe that's why I kept seeing that facial expression over and over again, because there's actually two people with that, that bug-eyed look. There's always a but. Uh-huh. No team is perfect. Even if the odds are against you, be ready for that one chance that they're not ready. These are the low budget animation scenes where there's no movement, but there's just a panning of a camera of a, a nicely illustrated area with some music and some human noises. Another frustrating part about having different animators is that the characters always look a little different every few episodes. <laughs> I like how every team has an upperclassman that just keeps the younger classmen in check. That's cool. So I love how even as the athletes are moving, the camera is also moving. I mean, there is no camera for animation, hypothetically, but what they do is they draw 
a larger scene. They always animate beyond the edge of what they want to show to give whoever is the, the director more space to play with, whether they want to focus on here, here, or maybe zoom in. But I love how they probably use a, a software now where they make it rotate randomly as they're animating just to make it feel like you're there in on the court with the action. I wonder if they're look, looking at the team that they were they're seeing on the DVD or if this is a brand new team. Ooh, a small skilled team. Or shorter. Oh no, they got, they got a giant. I bet you there's going to be a player from Brazil because basketball is really popular there too. Okay, so this is the team that they were looking at. <laughs> Sarah's is really weak. <laughs> this is where the perspective is off because you have the background where the lines are converging up, but then you have this skewed height perspective where the captain of the team in gray is supposed to be as tall as Papa, but he's barely taller than the Tanaka defender and somehow he's shorter than Kagami. And so that would make a lot more sense if the background court, if it was going down in perce perception, so everything's kind of coming up this way. That's where understanding the principles of art and design of perspective is really important because visually this is just throwing me off here. Ooh, he just straight up said we're going to win. Love it. <laughs> Everyone's got their... Kind of like Ushijima, just stating facts. Just like Ushijima. I'm already losing track of these basketball team names. The one thing that Japanese anime did never slacks on is when it comes to illustrating and animating technology. You got the circular ridge to show the separation between the bend of the earphone and the actual soft part of the earphone that sets in your ear. And then as it transitions down to the wire, you can see that it's made of multiple parts and the well-illustrated casing of the wire there. Surprised they didn't make it look like a, a Gundam gun. Interesting that everyone's got their own superstitions, but even the highest level athletes, like they have to tie their shoes in a certain way or they have to stand up in a certain way. It's their need to feel like they have control. Ah, so the, the captain is calling the shots of who he gets, they're not the coaches. <laughs> yeah, they should have had Tsugawa, the, or whatever his name is, the gray haired guy, has some piercings because they usually like to emulate, make certain characters look like famous athletes. Dennis Rodman, one of the best defenders of all time. Food. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> I 
That was a new expression. First of all, his mouth looks like a cat. That's what it looks like. But then we got this brown teardrops coming from his eyes. <laughs> Poor coach. I think they did a good job of not overly sexualizing her. Just to show like she is just hardcore about basketball, that's it. She's not there to be eye candy. Alright, we got that. That intense Kuroko band music going on, so that means there's going to be an exciting scene coming up. Like a true captain given the speech of inspiration. The belief of your team leaders is paramount to the success of your team. Now whether or not they win or lose, one thing I really appreciate about the captain's attitude here, he's not just being arrogant, he's not trying to overact because sometimes people fake their confidence too much. But he just has a calm demeanor about himself is we're gonna win like we're gonna try to do this doesn't matter if the odds are stacked against us and you'd be surprised at how many captains don't have this mindset because as soon as we see a team's warm up and as soon as we see them slam dunking you could tell in the body language that people are just waiting for the game to be over so everything starts with self-belief and you have to proclaim it with your voice That's an interesting question. Probably when he was on the middle school team when it was no longer a team sport, that's my guess. So deep. Hating something you love is painful. We got a philosopher on the team. Mm. So my guess is that he knows how much that loss of getting destroyed last year hurt the seniors of this year and how that positioned them to possibly hate the game of basketball because it hurts so much to lose a game that you love and then to be in that moment of conflict where you, exactly like Kuroko said, you, you hate something that you have always loved. So maybe that's going to motivate Kuroko even more to try to win this to help his seniors kind of move beyond that. Don't tell me they're going to go to the next episode. Now it's time for our lunchtime crunch time from our video sponsors Tokyo Treat and Sakuroko, which are monthly subscription services where you receive authentic Japanese snacks delivered straight to your door every month. Now let's try some snacks from a more traditional selection of Japanese snacks from Sakuroko. I've just been in a savory mood so I chose one of the salty snacks. Smells like green onion and the package is green. Let's see if it tastes like green onion. Almost like a rice, salty, seaweed puff. Mmm, it's got a nice umami flavor. Now you know I love my seafood and I'm guessing this is a seafood snack and those must be some squid. Ooh, that's a small, strong fishy smell there. Mmm, whoa. This one's super yummy. It's fried maybe squid tentacles with like a hint of lime or something. Mmm. I've never had anything taste like this, at least in terms of a snack. Next, we'll try some snacks from a more modern selection from Tokyo Treat. I think these are chips, and I'm feeling something more sweet from Tokyo Treat. I think those are plums. We'll see. I love that initial smell. It smells like potato chips. Don't know what they taste like just yet. Mm, interesting. Definitely got a sweetness to it. I think it's supposed to be cherry with a little bit of tartness. Sweet and sour. 
Can't go wrong with that. Now we'll finish off with one of my favorite combinations, strawberry chocolate, almost looks like a Kit Kat. Oh, the strawberry smell is so strong. Maybe like a rice cracker. Magnificent, oh, yummy. Chocolate on the back side, kind of rice crack on the inside, light strawberry flavor on the top. My only complaint is that they didn't make this bigger. If you want to try your own authentic Japanese snacks and eat them as we watch Kuroko no Basket together, then use my discount code and link in the description box to get $5 off your first order, which also directly supports this channel because I get a small commission from every purchase that you make, and that goes directly back into making better videos for all of you. So thanks so much for your support. Oh, thank goodness, I wanna see some basketball action. We gotta look at this matchup. And they got the, the audience perspective, just like Haikyuu, where you don't just get to see the player's perspective. I wish they would show like actual more defensive movements versus just him doing this. Holding the ball too long sounds familiar. Yeah, that guy's a big boy. Love has his eyes are just so dead, no expression. So maybe this team is really good because their defense is so good, not necessarily because their shooting is amazing. And maybe that's why they're an undersized team with exceptional defense. Yeah, good defense breaks your flow. You can't get into any rhythm. <laughs> They're not as good as I thought. Yeah, so yeah, that's what good defenders do. They they make you play more aggressive because you get frustrated. It's a good way to educate the audience. Five fouls and you're out of the game. So my prediction is that this team is exceptional at defense and that's just classic Japanese team sports because in volleyball it's the same way. They are known for the incredible, incredible defense. Now for the basketball fans that only watch basketball and Kuroko, I highly recommend just looking up Japanese men's or women's volleyball teams and just look at their crazy defense. They're small on the court but they are just all over the place. And that's what people get excited about when they watch the Japanese teams is the amazing rallies and the crazy defense. So I'm not surprised that one of the best teams has amazing defense as well. Ooh, that's a good scene. He's looking at who's open. Everyone's got covered by a man. Now we're getting to the good animation. But let's see what patterns they notice. Which is physically exhausting, by the way. Playing man defense is really tiring. A lot of teams play zone defense where you cover a general area. Defense. So everyone keeps talking about how they don't want to wear themselves out or they're going to get tired, so I'm curious if that will even be a factor. Oh, integration of martial arts, I love it. Namba running. Inch, whoa, this is fascinating. I 
I'm not sure if I agree with that. You actually spend less energy doing opposite limbs because that's how you counterbalance naturally and using momentum of the opposite swing of your arm and leg versus, I mean, try it for yourself. It's actually more taxing to have to not over twist by using the same arm and the same leg. But we'll go with it. We'll go with it for now. But I think it's cool that they have that unique perspective on the basketball team. Whether or not it's realistic, I think it's cool that they have their own unique style. Okay, just being really efficient. No wasted movement. That's a good principle to apply to all sports. You don't want excessive movement. And there the coach does, bringing them down to earth. They are athletes just like you, nothing special. The ball's the same, the court's the same. Some very good words from a young coach. Definitely what wouldn't be able to say that at her age when I started coaching. Now he's taking it personal. He probably does have a plan, but they're going to save it for later. But I do remember he can achieve a faster, stronger level if he focuses enough. He did that against Kisei. Sometimes you just gotta let your great athletes do do their thing. <laughs> yes, look at this turn. I mean, determination. Oh, he juked. He juked the master defender. Let's see if he's going to get blocked by the, the other tall captain. Playing for your seniors? Ah, so that, okay. The first dunk. That would suck if that was their first point. <laughs> Here's what the score is. We'll see if he still smiles when he... Okay. Yeah, he likes the challenge. There was a lot of talking in this episode. I was happy to finally get into the action. And also just to get a different strategy. And one thing that's so fun about these sports animes is, is that every team has a unique style of play. And it's so fun to learn about what they specialize in. There's two lessons that I would take away as a young athlete that I try to teach my kids as a coach. The first one is learning how to play for something bigger or someone other than yourself. Playing hard for your teammates, playing for your coach. And oftentimes, especially toward the end of the season, playing all out for your seniors because it is their last year. And that's the best way you can show your upperclassmen gratitude for being your leaders and just being the, the, the people that will take on the pressure and hopefully set a good example for the rest of your team. So if you're an underclassman, you have trouble getting motivated, play hard for your seniors. The second lesson is from Kagami. It might seem unrealistic to think 
Well, of course, if he just wants to play faster, he should play fast all the time. But sometimes it's hard to access that deeper level of ability and competitiveness unless you're faced with an opponent that draws that out of you. And also great coaches know how to draw that out of you. But the bigger lesson is that even when you feel like giving up, even when you feel like the opponent is just on you, we always have another gear inside of us. And it's just a matter of digging deeper into ourselves and believing in ourselves and believing that we can win no matter who we're playing to achieve a level of performance and skill that you never would have thought possible. So I'm loving these life and sports lessons from Kuroko No Basket.